Welcome to Math with Professor V. This is a special edition of Integral of the Day. We're doing an integral every day as part of a countdown to 2025. So I have a good old rational function with limits of integration this time just to keep all our arithmetic skills sharp. Pause the video if you want to give it a go on your own. Quick little hint though, don't forget to long divide because the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, okay? So that's actually what I'm gonna go in and do first. Remember, you can only find partial fraction decomposition when the degree of the denominator is higher than the degree of the numerator. My pre-calc teacher said it needs to be a J-Lo or bottom-heavy fraction. And more than 20 years later, here I am remembering that. Okay, here we go. So we're going to divide x cubed plus x squared into x cubed plus 4x squared plus x minus 1. Don't get freaked out. You just look at the leading terms. What do I multiply x cubed by to make it x cubed? Why just 1? And then you distribute that 1 to x cubed and x squared, multiplying it, and you list it underneath. So this is going to be x cubed plus x squared and nothing else. Then in the next step, we subtract this from the row up above. x cubed cancels out as it should. And then we're just left with 3x squared plus x minus 1, since there's nothing to subtract here. Now, this is all my remainder, because notice this is degree 2. My divisor is degree 3. No, it can't go into something of a lower degree. So we're really done. So now we're ready to rewrite this integrand as follows. So we have integral from 1 to 2. My quotient is just 1 plus it would be this remainder over the divisor, over the original denominator. So watch, we're going to have 1 plus all of this, 3x squared plus x minus 1 over x cubed plus x squared dx. Are we doing okay? All right, good. If you forgot polynomial long division, I have a video on it, so I'll link it in the description. This was a pretty simple, short case. Sometimes it's more involved, so make sure your skills are on point. Okay, now that the degree of the denominator is higher than the degree of the numerator, we can go ahead and find the partial fraction decomposition for this rational expression. I'm just going to leave the one alone. We'll take all the antiderivatives at the same step, okay? That way things don't get too messy. So now it's partial fraction time. And make sure you factor the denominator completely. So we've got 3x squared plus x minus 1 over, I can take out an x squared, and then I'm left with x plus 1. So be careful, x squared, that's a repeated linear factor. So I'm going to have to list it out twice. I'm going to have to list it to the first, and then again to the second power, because it appears at most to the second power here, so that's where I stop. If it was cubed, I would have x, x squared, and then x cubed. And then my other factor is a linear factor, but it's not repeated, it's just x plus one. So all of these will just have constants in the numerator, a, b, c. You only put something like ax plus b or whatnot when you have an irreducible quadratic. This doesn't count, this is a repeated linear factor. It wasn't something like x squared plus four. Okay, I also have a surprise, surprise video on partial fractions if you need a refresher. So now our job is to solve for the constants a, b, and c. Let me multiply through by x squared times x plus 1, so we get rid of all the denominators. So on the left-hand side, we'll have 3x squared plus x minus 1 equals, now one of the x's is going to cancel here, so I just have a times x times x plus 1 plus next is b times x plus 1 plus cx squared. Very good. In this case, let me multiply everything out and then I'll solve for a, b, and c by setting the coefficients of like terms equal to each other. So this is going to give me ax squared plus ax plus bx plus b plus cx squared. Okay, so let's look first at all the x squared terms. I have over here 3x squared and then ax squared and cx squared. So that tells me 3 has to equal a plus c. 
And then let's move down the line. So x to the first, I have one x to the first and ax plus bx over here. So that means one has to equal a plus b. And then lastly, x to the zero, which is just your constant term. Well, I've got negative one and that has to equal b. Ooh, that's nice. So then if I know b is negative one, just work your way up. Negative one, move it over, a is two. And then look here, if a is two, then c is one. Wow, that just fell into place. Sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, so now we are ready to return to our integral. So now we have, remember we had limits? Oh yeah, we had limits from one to two. We already had from long division a one plus, let me scroll back up in case you forgot, a over x, so we'll have two over x minus, because b is negative one, one over x squared plus c is one over x plus one, okay? So we have one plus, this is gonna be two over x, a over x minus one over x squared plus one over x plus one dx. Okay, here we go. Term by term. This is the fun part, hopefully. Or maybe you've been having fun this whole time. Fabulous. Antiderivative of 1 is just x plus, this is going to be 2 natural log absolute value of x. Now don't forget here, this is x to the negative second, right? 1 over x squared. So if I add 1 to the exponent, it'll be x to the negative first. And then we also have to divide by the new exponent. So dividing by negative one, and there's already a negative here, it's gonna make it positive. Let me just already write it as one over x. Boom, plus antiderivative of one over x plus one would be natural log absolute value x plus one. That's this guy. And this is all evaluated now from one to two, okay? So here we go, upper limit minus lower limit. This will be two plus two natural log, I don't have to write, the absolute value anymore once I actually plug in that constant and make sure that it's positive so we're good plus one half plus natural log of two plus one that's three minus now the lower limit one plus two natural log of one plus one over one is one plus natural log of two okay so let's see what's going on we have ooh Natural log of one is zero. So this whole term is gone. This is zero. And then check this out. Here's positive two, but here's negative one plus one, which is negative two. So those all cancel out. That's just gone. We don't have to fuss with those. So let's see what's left over. I have two ln of two plus a half plus ln of three minus ln of two, right? Because this negative distributes. And then I can combine both of these guys. 2 ln of 2 minus ln of 2 is just ln of 2 plus a half plus ln of 3. And then, you know, we ought to combine these into a single natural log. Yes, it'll look just so clean. Natural log of 6 plus 1 half. And that's our final answer. Did you guys get it right? How was the partial fraction decomposition? I think it was pretty nice. Sometimes those repeated linear factors solving for the constants can get really disgusting. This one was not bad. So I hope you enjoyed this integral of the day. I'm gonna do an array of integration techniques. That way we're all ready to go for next semester by parts, trig sub, we'll do a, a, a good mix and then maybe a few like really funky, spicy ones, okay? Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. If you need to review any of these integration techniques, then check out the playlist on my YouTube channel. I would go through all of Integral of the Day. It's just a good refresher if you've learned everything already and you just want to brush up or just go to the Calculus 2 video lectures because I'll do an in-depth lesson or lecture on each of the integration techniques and walk you through more basic examples if that's what you need. All right. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and TikTok while it's here. Math with Professor V. I love you all so much. I'll be back sooner than later. Bye.